So there's a couple things that I didn't really tell you guys about. One of which is back in May, I actually had a complete breakdown um, of my health, my happiness, my feeling of being a good person, all of it. Like I had just what can be best summed up as a complete burnout breakdown uh, back, May, back in May. And I didn't tell you guys really about it except maybe very, very briefly because it's embarrassing to hit a point where you objectively know you are so successful at what you do and you're happy to hit a point where you can feed your family and put a roof over your head and why stress and why worry about that and so you feel really ridiculous for the fact that you are full body sobbing for the first time in a very very long time curled up in my love sack in chips's arms at the time and he was so worried for me and I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't think. My mind and my very brain felt broken. Um, it felt like something shattered and I just felt like the stress, what stress though, but the stress uh, pushed me to a point where I just had a complete breakdown and I couldn't do things. I couldn't create i couldn't go through the motions i was staring at my beautiful plaque that's on my wall back at home create even when your heart is broken and it's healing beyond words you know and i felt like a fraud because here i was not only my heart but my mind broken and i hardly could get words out let alone bring myself to create and that's when we left for uh for visiting chips's family his mom is also actually our doctor she is amazing um i don't really she's so niche at what she does i'm probably never going to tell you guys what she specializes in but uh basically she's done everything from working in the er so you can go to her and speak about health matters like physical health matters she's also a vegan of almost 30 years now a very healthy vegan of almost 30 years so we go to her for a lot of our nutritional references and she's very good at educating herself every single day the woman knows more about quantum physics i'm not joking and the study of how the universe was created and functions than i could ever shake a stick at and she educates herself very adamantly every single day like sits down and if you thought you were at the cutting edge of reading a science article and wanted to try to show off to her what you learned and it was just published two days ago she's already read it she already has seen who wrote it and probably has personal connections with that person she's amazing and she also does a lot of counseling um and that is fantastic so we went to go see her and it was very casual just mostly for mother's day but being in her presence is very calming and soothing and helps to remind me that there's somebody to talk to even if i don't really use her as a therapist but that's how intense things were chips just his, all his red alarms went off and he wanted to take care of me so we hoofed it down from michigan to north carolina to see his mom uh because she's a, an amazing doctor at what she does that's how serious it kind of was <laughs> uh we kind of could like gloss it over as a mother's day trip but there was a deeper a much deeper reason for that and i haven't really told you guys about that because i'm embarrassed for one thing uh no longer really now that i understand what kind of pushed me into that corner but i was embarrassed because i am by all of my measuring tools very successful and lucky i could list off all of the amazing things that have been done in my life in the last year with complete just oh my gosh gratitude and and that's also actually what scared me about what happened in may is that i couldn't write in my joy journal and that should have been my biggest red flag that should have been the like red alarms going off if i cannot sit down and write in my joy journal i have my newest joy journal because i just filled up my other one a few days ago but this is my newest joy journal the one that my mom gave me for my birthday and if i cannot sit down and write three things bullet point one word 
that's the bare minimum if I can't do that every day and it can't even be stuff as generic as I have both legs to use I have water to drink if I can't even put those in if I can't even feel motivated enough to do that then I know that something is terribly wrong my joy journal is not only my most important tool for cultivating gratitude reflection for being able to help me keep my my moral and emotional compass pointed in the right directions but it is my canary in the mind of letting me know when things are going wrong and i need to step back and reevaluate what's going on in my life and i wasn't even able to write in my joy journal and i should have known when uh there were like a whole week plus going by and I hadn't even picked up a pen to write in my joy journal that something was off and I didn't listen to it so I'm I'm grateful I have my joy journals and I find if I cultivate gratitude every single day then I have such a deeper well of strength to be able to look at the problems in my life and ask if they're really problems for one thing look at the things going on in my life and ask if this is truly worth the level of stress and emotion that I am choosing to give to it. And I didn't tell you guys about how I fell completely apart because I also have been pushing so hard to try to put on a more professional face and put on a more like tidy PR front and I was thinking maybe that's what I'm supposed to do and also I didn't have the answers yet of why I I broke like I did uh, in May and why suddenly a schedule that wasn't even as intense as I've done for months and years past was too crushing um, and the last few days I have had an amazing opportunity to reflect on that breakdown in May and I feel so rejuvenated I feel like I have had the kind of spiritual retreat that people always talk about in big quotation marks and and wearing fancy yoga clothes and having paid a lot of money for and um, I I feel at peace again and I feel like I'm able now to look back on what happened in May and explain it and maybe put this out there for people who could use my discoveries to also help yourselves with whatever may be going on in your life and also to add this event into the diary of my life that is my vlog channel I want to be able to show growth and I thought about that too I asked myself what do I really want out of my vlog channel and I thought I really want to look back and I want to see how I've grown I really want to look back and see what challenges I said guys I'm doing this and then I want to see the progression of that challenge I realized that that's what's the most important to me for my vlog channel it is my tiny little creative spear that I I can unleash my emotions i can unleash my my full scope of my personality and skills on it's never anything i want to become super big it's not supposed to be a source of income like the main channel is it's a space for a very tight-knit community and it's a space for me to just play in and when i think what do i want to see from this space in like two years then the answer comes back the thing that most interests me in vlogs and in seeing them not only in myself but other people are when someone goes this is a challenge or this is a, a thing I want to progress on that's in my life right now and then you can watch them go through that process. I find that to be the most fulfilling types of vlogs to watch because it is a very monkey see monkey do thing. Watching someone, like right now, uh, Jazza and my Korean husband, they're both focusing on their fitness and watching them have committed to their fitness, Jazza, for a Draw With Jazza's vlog channel very recently. And uh, my Korean husband has been on a five month fitness workout where he's like working out three day, three hours a week or three hours a day every week uh since like five months ago watching them have like made those choices and then watching them go through the process of actually following through on them is so inspiring and in the same way i realized that that's what i love the most out of watching other people not only on vlogs but other people's lives too there's something so fulfilling not 
the level of success that it is you, it can be tiny it can be learning to cook a new thing it could be grasping a language a little bit more or it could be something even just that's kind of active but kind of passive like watching bubs of just bubs her vlog channel uh she is going to have her second child in a few weeks and watching that happen is is something where you can see that progression in someone's life and i just find that so beautiful and i love seeing that in the people i care about i think that's why i invest a lot of time and effort and love and hope into trying to give them the tools and share with them tools to grow and i think that's why i want to share the tools i find to grow with you guys too why i want to step away from the fact i'm in a foreign country and i should be going out and adventuring in that foreign country and sharing that experience with you guys i want to step away from that and i think what's true to the core and the heart of what I want to see from this place is progression of myself and the tools I used to constantly improve and the measuring tools I use to decide what is improvement, what is worth investing your heart in, what is what is not worth investing your heart in, what are the things that are not worth putting your sense of worth and value into. And I want to share that with you guys. So yeah, this is going to be extremely rambly if you can't tell, but that's just because I'm not perfect at encompassing all of these big giant ideas that are becoming the framework for how I want to live from now on, for the foreseeable future at least, uh, into concise statements. If I was, I could write a book about it and probably become very happy and share that knowledge to lots and lots of people, but I'm still just a novice sitting here learning about myself and how I want to interact with the world and how I want to interact with my future and my communities. So thank you guys for riding out this phase of the journey with me if you're interested. If you're not and you're just wanting to hang out for the vlog, uh, food, the yummy food, the cats, all of that, don't stress. This is my creative space to kind of do anything with and you are under no obligation to even feel any of this resonate with you. With a lot of the self-help books like The Power of Now, Seven Habits of a Highly Effective Family, the two new books that I now have in my toolkit to always keep in my inner library, uh, which I'll share with you guys in just a moment, there's times for those things to enter your life just because you read a book that everybody else like the power of now for instance changed my life at the time that i read it because i was obsessed with ruminating over bad things i felt like i lived 99 percent of the time in coming up with mental role play scenarios of the bad things that could happen or fights with people or what i did four years ago i used to live 90 percent of the time in that space no matter what was happening around me physically in the moment and so when i was looking at someone in my class in my human physiology class read a book and it just said now on the front and i kind of laughed and i was like what is that and she looked up and her eyes were all sparkly she was like this is an amazing book i found it in barnes and noble and i just can't believe this it's really helping me just organize my life and feel involved with everything and i never saw her bring that book back to class we never talked about that book again. I don't know how it affected her past that, but I just remember going, whoa, okay. And then I went to Barnes & Noble and happened to see it on an end cap, and I got The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And at that time, it was the perfect moment for that book to enter my life. But I've tried reading it since then, and sometimes it's again the perfect moment, and sometimes it's not the tool for the moment, and it feels like it's just way too out there. It feels like, eh, this is mostly just like new agey, foo -foo. Maybe this author likes thinking about his ideas more than giving me anything useful to implement. And then other times, every word resonates with me. So I think that's another thing I, again, and this is i'm beginning to understand going to be my space to share my progression and my tools for progression with anyone who happens to stumble upon them and be interested and maybe just for my future self but some of those tools that you find and some of those tools that other people find to be the thing the key that unlocked their feeling of being able to embrace their life with gratitude and contentment every day 
may not be the right tool for you at the right time. So just remember that. So don't feel obligated to anything I share. Anything that works for me may not work for you. And that goes with a ton of things in life. So that little ramble aside, I've spent the last few days somehow being able just to slip into a really great place to kind of meditate on what happened to me in May because it was a pretty severe event and it was a pretty big event. And uh, the other thing I haven't told you guys is that the place we're actually in, which I do feel very excited to be able to give you guys a little tour of soon, is used as a healing artist meditative retreat when it's not being rented out to travelers like myself and Chips. Uh, which means that this environment, and I kind of get that uh, now that I've been here for almost a month and can kind of pick up on the vibe of the place by the items that are put around, by the the evidence of just the gentle wear and tear, where people have obviously set, the, the things that you wouldn't expect to find, like the incense and the bundles of sage and the books that are in Chinese, English, French, German, that are self-reflective, the diary I found in a drawer that belonged to somebody who stayed here that was entirely self-reflective on how they could better their life and it's definitely clearly a space where a lot of that kind of emotional work and energy has been done and some people are going to roll their eyes and think that I'm talking complete nonsense but other people if you've traveled a lot or traveled just to the right kind of places where you get a different feel, a different emotional feel from a place, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's just certain places that have that so hard that it just punches all of your emotions away and gives you an emotion to feel. Like when we went to uh, Hawaii and Chips and I stood watching the volcano on Hawaii and the lava coming into the ocean, there was such a sense of sacredness and that's not a word chips or I use. We're, we're not very like traditional spiritual, but it w there was such a sense that it wiped out all your other emotions and put that in you. And everybody was silent. The people who I it looked like I could probably get into fights with, <laughs> like politically, or it looked like I could get into arguments with every other day of the week, or we might like kind of avoid each other on the street. We're standing side by side and you could tell like the whole group was feeling the same sense of awe and sacredness for a better sense of the word. And there's places that can just completely do that to you. Or like the feeling when I came up over the crest of the sand dune and saw the Great Lake, Great Lake of Michigan for the first time. Oh, oh my gosh, that was the same sort of feeling. Um, but then there's other places that have it on a lower scale, on a, a little bit of a quieter key. And this is one of those places where it really kind of pulls at you to slow down a little bit more. This is an oasis in the middle of the city where I have cats and bamboo, a red door for prosperity and success, kind of keeping out the entire city life. I am surrounded on all sides by buildings that are up to 30 stories tall. We counted the other day while we were waiting for a passion fruit drink to be made. And when I look out the window, I see the ferns and I see the plants that are on my deck and then I see wall after wall after wall of concrete but here inside of this space it's made of wood it's very calming it doesn't feel rushed it doesn't feel really synced up with time the only clock here is broken and even though I was feeling so much pressure to vlog and to create these exciting adventures in Taiwan for you guys. The last few days, just all of the things that had been in the back of my mind, in the back of my heart over what happened and why in May, why did I break down, kind of started to fold together. And I also had the opportunity to read two new books that have really helped me sort of begin to understand these things. One of those books was suggested by one of you and forgive me for not remembering your name offhand, it's that I'm terrible with name things, but it was the, the Philosophy of Kaizen 
which is one small step changing your life at a time. Constant, continual improvement over a long period of time because you show up and take one small step every day. And so I got the book about Kaizen from Robert uh, Marr, who's PhD. Uh, he has been using it in his psychology practice for uh, psychiatric practice actually for a very, very long time. And it resonated really strongly with me over, especially in his book, uh, the thing that really resonated with me was that fear is just anxiety. Um, and that's, don't take me wrong on this, but just this part in particular really resonated with me. When I hear the word, I'm anxious, or when I hear the word stress, those feel like gigantic brick walls, concrete walls even, not even brick with the little chips of, of motor that I'm, I might be able to get my fingers into. The word anxiety and stress have been such a huge part of my life and have been the kind of like major forces pushing me into this counseling session ever since I was a child. I was in therapy before I even was in kindergarten. <laughs> And I, I think about those two words and it feels like they're so strong. They're like these tsunami tidal waves that just push you into one direction. And they're so overused in some ways in our popular culture, stress, anxiety, stress, anxiety, that they feel like they're impossible to fight. But the word fear is different for me because I've been afraid before and I've learned how to work around with or through that fear. And so when I read in the Kaizen way that anxiety and stress are types of fear, it changed everything suddenly for me. And I realized I could define fear. Trying to define anxiety or stress feels almost impossible to me because they feel like gigantic brick walls. And even if you do define them, it just feels like their, their root cause is always something that would require deeply dramatic changes. But being able to go, I'm feeling anxious, and then back up and go, what am I afraid of right now? And answer that question honestly, that small question honestly, has changed so much. And it was just like suddenly, so much personal revelation for what happened to me in May just poured out and it felt really good. <laughs> and I'm being really messy about this and I'm sorry, this is much harder than I thought it would be, but I'm glad to start making some progress and moving forward on it. And it's been a few days since I vlogged, so I feel like I have so many things bubbling up inside of me that I wanna share. So I'm just gonna try to keep to one this time and then we can talk about other rambles next time. But I really recommend the Kaizen Way because its philosophy is all about making big changes with small steps and things that make you feel fearful or anxious, uh, that feel just too impossible to handle, that feel overwhelming. Anytime I start to feel swamped now, I am asking myself a small question and then using that small question to make a small step, one step at a time. And I can only say that reading the book will kind of help to explain what the heck I'm talking about really, but I'll also show you guys in the future uh, my small question and then my small step that I take to work towards that. Like for example, I'm beginning to realize in May, um, I was scared and overwhelmed because I was letting people down by not getting the schedule done that I wanted. <laughs> and so, the small question, small step philosophy of the Kaizen way of continual improvement and stopping and asking yourself, what could I do to make this moment uh, more efficient or to take this step or to, to address this fear has really helped me start understanding one of the reasons for how I got myself so backed into a corner that I broke in May. And the other thing that has really helped me are two other things. One of which is this book by Mark right over here, Motivation for Creative People. 
and I read that book and I'm rereading it in sections and chunks as as I feel like this part I need to reflect a little bit more on in order to understand my job. It is a book for people like me who make their livelihood and their career off of being a creative, which sounds really fancy. It sounds like something you can shoot for. It sounds like something that has a definition, which it kind of doesn't and it does. It just means being your livelihood, your career is based off of your creativity. And that sounds so awesome until like all of these other stresses and pressures start pouring in. And so what Mark did in his book was explain four key parts that he believes define uh, the, here, let me find the actual little image, that define how these jobs work. And and it really helped because I I was, okay, let me back up for a second. When you have a creative job, the feeling when you're in the flow is so much more intense than when you were just in the flow when it was a hobby or before you even shared it with anybody, when it was just something you did as a creative exercise. And any of you who have created and would consider yourself like dabbling in some sort of creative venture know what I'm talking about when it comes to the flow. You might get that from doing math sometimes, you might get that from painting, you might get that from running if that's really your thing. There is a, well really maybe not so much for running unless you're challenging yourself in a creative way, but any of you who are creatives or have been creatives know about the flow about when everything just feels like you are synced in and you're in harmony with what you're doing, what you're making, who you are, your potential, a slight bit of your own personal growth is mixed in there so you're challenging yourself a little bit too and you come out of the process of creating feeling like you were you almost had like an out of body on cloud nine experience. The flow is amazing and it is such a refreshing experience when you create because you feel so good about what you did and it can make up for all of those days when you felt like you were doubtful of what you did and you were in doubt of like what you created or how you did it or how people are going to receive it the flow feels fantastic and it just gets so much more intense when you dip into the flow when you're searching for it when and it's kind of also when you feel like everything is moving in such perfect harmony that it becomes sort of a goal to figure out how to facilitate that more it's not just like i don't want it to just be an elusive reward that on good days when i'm in a good mood this happens i want it to be something that can hopefully be my compass to know that i'm on the right track with my job and it's really hard when becoming creative is your career to be able to enter that flow more often because the the keys to kind of turning it and making it feel like it's part of you uh, are so much more intense because your livelihood is riding on being creative and it's amazing the way that can kind of like pull your legs right out from under yourself so it's really important for me to address what I do on a creative scale where I can be authentic to myself, true to the way I love creating, but still cognizant and aware of the external reasons that I now create as well. Being able to work with a community of people, being able to have the, the gift of, well, not the gift really, being able to earn the rewards of my work with having the funds to finance my life so I can eat and take care of my family. <laughs> And it's really hard to juggle those things. We actually have had arguments in the vlog channel, uh, let alone the the main channel about, and you'll see it everywhere too, about why should a YouTuber make videos. This is a bigger subject that I will talk about for sure later. All of these things kind of are. I'm just sort of glossing over where I've been for the last few days and it's been deep. <laughs> but you'll see people who will argue till they're blue in the face that a YouTuber should only do it for themselves. They should only create what they feel in tune with. They should only create what they feel is truly like their desire to make. And then you'll see people who will argue till they're blue in the face that a YouTuber should 
only create for their community that's the point of being a youtuber if you were just gonna make for yourself why even share it if you're not in tune with your community and making what they want what's the point and you'll see people who will argue till they're blue in the face that why should a youtuber ever make anything that's not gonna get views not gonna get money you know you'll see all of those arguments and you'll also see people who will be uh, very hostile towards any of those groups. They'll be super hostile towards the people who don't make the things they want. You can see that a lot in my channel alone when I'll make certain videos but not make enough Star Stable or Wolf Quest or Warrior Cats or uh, games I don't even play like Five Nights at Freddy and you'll see people get very frothing at the mouth, angry and frustrated, mostly the younger viewers. I will definitely admit that a lot of my nanny techniques serve me very very well in my genre but you'll see that group really upset that you're not ma you're making for yourself and you're not making for the community and then sometimes for the community group you'll get people who will be like well i know everybody really likes this series um let me think about some that might suit like uh the the um oh like the ultimate simulator games or or the wolf quest series or some of the other things that are super popular but then i'll get comments now and then i just don't feel like this is this is you and you should only be making for you and you'll get those kinds of people who feel very much it's almost kind of like a little bit of nose in the air like this doesn't seem as authentic and deep to your heart, the, the truth of your being that this is. And sometimes people mean it from a really won wonderful point of view of like, don't worry about all these people who want this series, uh, just focus on this part that makes you so happy. And then you'll see people who argue this other category, and sometimes they come from both these other camps of, how dare a YouTuber want to make money off their videos? I use ad block and like lots of nasty words to you for being a greedy bunny hog. How dare you try to pay your rent? <laughs> so you'll see that category of people too. And so then imagine being the creator looking at all of this and trying to think, how do I be authentic to my work while paying my bills, while working with a community that's sometimes hostile to me and make all of that happen? And this book has helped me with that tremendously. And I wish that other creative people I know in my life, like my, my mother and my grandmother, who also made their businesses selling their artwork, could have had maybe this as a reference tool. Neither of them were as deeply reflective as I am. So and more on that in a minute too. So I don't know if it would have helped, but this is the basic philosophy of what this book talks about, that the flow when everything is in harmony with your job as a creator kind of is all of these things meeting your personal self meeting your intrinsic work goals meeting your social relationship with others meeting the extrinsic extrinsic rewards of what you do so this is kind of like your own personal values are you following true on the values of who you are meeting your flow of work. How do you work? Are you able to enjoy the work you do? Do you feel at harmony with the work you do? Do they align with your values? Those things are very closely related. Meeting the social component. Does your work rely on you working with other people? Do you get along with those people? What kind of community of people are there? Meeting the external goals of or how, how does this help you with your reputation, with your finances, with maybe some of the accolades that you can build up? Uh, you know, those parties, getting, getting noticed, getting a YouTube sub button, stuff like that. And there's often times in the past where I've tried to pretend that only one of these, maybe my personal or maybe my extrinsic when I'm really ex extrinsic, oh my gosh, maybe the money, the green one, the money is the most important because I have to feed my family and, and put a roof over Chips and I's head and make sure my mom's like home nurse is able to be paid. Sometimes I feel like this one is the most important and that makes this one really sad and suffer a lot. And that makes this one end up suffering, which makes this one end up suffering, and they're all tied together. In the past, sometimes I've only listened to what my community wants at the cost of the values of what kind of videos 
I feel I should make. There's series that I've made that I've regretted because I don't feel like they're close to my values or I've regretted because I don't feel like they're close to the quality of the work I want to do intrinsically. And when I read this book, I felt so much better because it was finally justification to say that all of those things matter. And at some point I need to draw lines in the sand of this is my value. This so this is not a series I want to make anymore. Even if it does have a lot of this or it has a lot of this or this like this part up here, the social part, I would try to ignore sometimes. I would glance at my comments and I would have my mods go through and curate the bad ones and try really hard to look at the good ones but then decide, oh this is too much. I, I banned myself from looking at comments for the rest of the week and I wouldn't look at comments for the rest of the week and I would think, oh now I, I didn't have the nastiness in my head anymore. So clearly I'll be able to focus more on, on like my intrinsic goals and my sense of worth and yet um, after a while something shifted because as much as I, I didn't want to admit it having that social aspect that connection with my community actually was part of the whole pinwheel the whole pinwheel that when it starts moving creates flow as a creative lifestyle like as a as a creative professional uh which is uh, <laughs> i don't want to use the word professional because that feels like it has its own things to unpack but that has helped me a ton because it made me realize that yeah i do need my community i can't just lock them in a box and go i don't want to look at these comments anymore oh my gosh help no i and i can't just go oh i'm so sorry that i was focusing on the things that were making the most money on my channel and and like kowtow to the people who are really bitter about that and i can't ignore the things where i am asked to play series that i really feel like don't align with my my values for myself and my channel of what i want to see in the future of what i want my main channel to become and i realized that was at the heart of why i collapsed in may i was making some series that I just really didn't feel were right for me on a personal level, but they were super popular and they made a little bit of money. But then the other thing that happened in May is that the YouTube ad revenue got really scary. A third of it, up to half of it, just vanished overnight. And views were higher than they had ever been and suddenly I was making less money than I had made a year ago. and yet I have taken on more obligations since then and that's putting all my eggs in one basket really on me and very dangerous but when the YouTube stuff went down I had to suddenly look around me and go can I pay rent can I help my family this month can I make sure my mom's nurse still has her job because if they're, they're just you don't just have a month where you go oh i'm so sorry home nurse we can't pay you this month come back next month and it'll be fine she needs to have a stable job and she will find a new job if i don't pay her every month and she is such a perfect fit for my mom and has changed my family's life i was looking at that i was looking at the people that i i pay behind the scenes to help take care of some of the bigger things i'm trying to prepare for the channel and that extrinsic fear of the, the finances just disappearing cut away any sense of being able to enter that flow with my work and meeting the demands of the community but not the values that I feel I want to put forward of a healing, green, inspiring, adventurous, educational space for the main channel. That is what led to it all falling apart and I broke down. I shattered and I felt so guilty for doing that because I should be grateful for everything I have. I should be grateful for that that wonderful home I have back in Michigan. I, I should be grateful for the success. I should be grateful that I made any money. Even if it was a lot less suddenly, I still made money on YouTube and I should be grateful for that and I should be grateful for the fan mail and there were so many things and I broke and I was so angry at myself for that. And, and now I know why though and I had to stop being angry at myself and Chips's uh, unconditional love 
of me through the whole experience and his reassurance that I just had a very terribly skewed sense of my self-worth at the time and that time and patience and not taking things so seriously would help me understand where things were. It really helped me to take away the anger. And once the anger at myself was gone, I did want answers. And the last few days I've had a chance to sit and with all of these new tools with the Kaizen method of being able to in small questions in ways that don't trigger any anxiety because it doesn't trigger fear, ask myself why and in small ways being able to approach the things that were making me feel overwhelmed one tiny step at a time. And then this book over here over motivation for creative people and understanding that it's okay to need and want that money and it's okay to need my community but need to manage it and it's okay to have these values that are going to be the concrete lines that are going to define what I want my future as a creative person to be that is not just listening endlessly to the demands of thousands of people and fulfilling those that it's about having a vision that aligns with my personal values and the work that I do all of that has come together for me in the last couple of days but it was a patient and slow and quiet process and so that's why the vlogs disappeared because I I was having a very deep conversation with myself so that I can see some of that progression start happening in my life that I really really want to be able to have and to share with you guys um, and it's small steps <laughs> So I have been feeling anxious and overwhelmed. I'm also in a foreign country and probably dealing with some extent with a lot of culture shock on top of the whiplash of what happened to me just a month ago, about a month ago, a little over a month ago and a few days is when I had that breakdown. And I have pushed myself really hard to do so much since then. And it, when I look at it and I go, oh, and I still liked the collaborations with Stacy. I still traveled with Chips. I still <laughs> packed for Taiwan, I sold those posters, I started the vlog channel kick off again. When I look at all of those things I have done since then, I can also understand and be more accepting of why I felt so overwhelmed and lately and why I've been so exhausted lately. But I feel really good now. Um, so I'll stop rambling here, but I don't know if I, I laid everything out as neatly as I wanted, but I hope I could at least offer a bit of insight. maybe this was a key for somebody maybe this was just something to fill up time for other people but I know for me it was a good thing and a good step for the progress I want to see in my life so where I'm going from here is asking myself some small questions why have I set up my work schedule and my feeling of external expectations of myself to make every single day a challenge why did I set things up so that every single day is a challenge I have to meet. Why can't every single day just be a process of contentment? I don't have to pressure myself to do the work I do because I love what I do. But why did I set it up so that what I love what I do has to be a challenge every day because of the punishing schedule that I have put in front of myself? So I'm gonna be asking myself those kinds of small questions. And I ask myself the small question of, what do I want to see when I go home, when I look at my vlog channel and my experiences in Taiwan? What can I do to try to meet that just a little bit every day? It's not about biting off the big things. It's not about asking yourself a question just so you can turn around and be like, I need to lose 50 pounds now. <laughs> it's so you can turn around and find a small step. A step so small, the book mentions, that there is no resistance or fear to it. It can't trigger your fear because it's that tiny. Uh, and I highly recommend the Kaizen book if you have anxiety or something you really want to change or something you really don't have the motivation but you wish you did to do in your life because it really it really helped. I mean the examples that they gave in the book were as small as if you have a messy desk, take one paper clip and put it away every day. And that sounds ridiculous but I've been practicing these kinds of small step thoughts the last couple of days and it has snowballed into a very deep foundational change. Oh, and also um, one of the other things that has tremendously helped me is that I have been able to step back and ask myself my priorities. And I definitely need to make a different vlog talking about that in the future. 
but let's just say it hit me that I will always be Chips's partner and he will always be my best friend and that is going to outlast being Siri for you guys and when I realized that I realized that the core of what I do every day shouldn't be focused around work and it shouldn't be focused around what I can accomplish as Siri it needs to be what I can accomplish in my life with chips and it was one of the most powerful and freeing things to realize that that is the core for me it doesn't have to take up everything and we're both very independent with within our relationship but we love being together every day and I'll talk about that more later because I would have been flabbergasted if someone had told me that four, four or five, maybe five or six years ago, because we met about four and a half years ago, if someone had told me, hey you, one day you're going to look yourself in the mirror and go, my sense of purpose and contentment comes from being able to share a happy life with my best friend. And that's your whole goal for the day. If someone had told me that, I would have been like, You've been reading too many romance books and that sounds very disenfranchising and so on and yada yada, but um, I think that I gained a lot of the strongest part of my current foundation at realizing that, that kind of priority. And that I wish I had paid attention to would be uh, actually a lesson I could have gotten from Seven Habits of a Highly Effective Family of thinking about my, my life mission statement. And that would be that I want to share a happy life with chips and it do, and then I ask myself the small question is stressing over work every single day is having all this anxiety and all this tension I'm putting off all the time of like oh, I didn't record slime rancher today even though I, I said I would have it out is that worth my goal being with chips is going to outlast being Siri even if I'm Siri for the next 40 years. <laughs> so that really, that really, really helped me. And I'll talk about that more later. But that's the end of my rambles for now. Um, this has been a big rambler and sometimes there will be big ramblers because I'm realizing all of this, all these tools, the merging of them, the meditating on them have helped me realize that that's one of my goals for this place is not to share like look at what i did today look at what i bought today look at look at what i cooked today all the time but to share look at how i've grown look at the things that i'm trying to do and watch me as i do them and that's that's what this place is for so thank you guys so much i am going to go see if i can find some vegan cupcakes from the little bakery down the road before they close for lunch and i'll be back to you with adventures next time. <laughs>